Hey there, Kenya here. Today we will be making my delicious caprese sandwich. The ingredients you will need are onion, cucumber, spinach, fresh mozzarella, half an avocado, and two slices of Asiago bread. The first thing you will do is put two slices in the toaster oven and wait until the edges are lightly brown and then flip. After, you will take one slice out and leave the other slice in and add the fresh mozzarella on top and then let it melt. Time for the best part. Add your spinach, onion, avocado, and cucumber. And on the other slice, add a very light mayo and drizzle your balsamic glaze. And there you have it, your caprese sandwich. You can also have chips and fruit as a side, but I had the rest of my avocado. Hope you enjoyed. This is WBHS. Hello, I'm Chris Davis, and today I'll be teaching you how to bake soda bread. Soda bread is an easy, quick, and cheap way to make bread, and it doesn't even need to rise like most breads. All you're going to need is three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of caraway seeds, half a stick of butter at room temperature, and one and a half cups of buttermilk. But I will say, buttermilk on its own does taste and smell like spoiled milk and butter, so make sure to check the expiration date instead of trying to guess on your own. First, you're going to want to mix together the flour, sugar, salt, baking soda, and caraway seeds in a large bowl and whisk them together until they are finely integrated. Next, you're going to want to mix the butter into the mixture until it resembles something like a coarse meal or something around breadcrumbs. Next, you're going to want to pour all of the buttermilk into the center of the bowl and fold it over itself until it is just incorporated. Then, you're going to want to knead the mixture into a ball on a greased pan, and then cut four lines into it in the shape of a cross. And finally, put the loaf into the oven at 450 degrees for 15 minutes, and then turn it down to 400 degrees for another 25 minutes. And that's it! Your soda bread should now be ready to eat! Hope you enjoy! Alright, so today we're going to be making a buffalo chicken dip. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put your chicken in a crock pot or whatever you're going to be cooking it in. And you're going to want to shred that up. So the first thing you're going to add is your cream cheese. All you're going to need is that little, that one box of it. You don't need no more than that. And then you're going to add hot sauce. You're going to need lots and lots of hot sauce because it is buffalo, of course. Okay, and then after hot sauce, you're going to add your blue cheese. At first, I thought it was supposed to be ranch, but I was wrong. It's blue cheese, so you're going to add blue cheese. And then after you add your blue cheese, you're just going to stir everything up and make sure it's all combined i guess and now i am just adding more hot sauce like i said you're gonna need more more hot sauce okay now i'm just adding cheese um i used a whole pack and a half of cheese so yeah and here you have buffalo chicken dip that's all Hi, I'm Emma, and today I'm going to show you how to make a no-bake cheesecake. The first thing you're going to do is get 14 Oreo cookies. You're going to separate the Oreo filling with the Oreo cookies into two different bowls. It should look like this when you're finished. Next, you're going to take a Ziploc bag and place all of the Oreo cookies inside of it. Then you're going to take a spoon or a roller and crush the Oreos. It should look like this when you're finished. 
Then you're going to take one third cup of melted butter and pour it into the bag. Then you're going to zip the bag and start gently squeezing it so that the melted butter soaks up in the Oreo. Once the butter is all soaked up, pour it into a springform pan and begin gently packing it in with a spatula. It should look like this when you're finished. Put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes and we will now begin working on the cheese part. For this, you will need 1 teaspoon of gelatin and 4 tablespoons of water. Put them all together in a bowl. Then you're going to take 8 ounces of cream cheese and place it into another bowl. You're going to whisk the cream cheese until it's smooth and creamy. Then pour in 1 third cup sugar and Oreo cream. Whisk until it is completely mixed. Once the gelatin has sat for 15 minutes, place the bowl of gelatin into a bowl of hot water so that it will melt. Let the gelatin sit until it is completely melted. Once the gelatin has melted, place it into the mixture and whisk until it is completely mixed. After that, place 8 ounces of whipping cream into a bowl and whisk until it is formed. Once the whipping cream has formed, place it into the bowl of mixture and whisk gently until it is completely mixed. Take out the springform pan from the refrigerator and place the mixture into the pan. Spread it out evenly. For decoration, you can place six Oreos into the center of the cheesecake. Once that's done, place the cheesecake in the fridge for 3-4 to four hours. Your cheesecake is ready to eat after that. Enjoy! First, you're going to cut a tablespoon of butter and then immediately put it in the pan. Next, you're going to crack your three eggs and whisk them in whatever dish you may like. Then, while your butter is melting, you're going to take the eggs that you just whisked and pour them into the pan. Next, you're going to dice your onion, and we only like to use a slice of the onion instead of the whole onion. And don't forget about your eggs in the skillet. You need to dice them up into tiny pieces and make sure they get brown on the bottom. This is what the final result should look like. Then pour your eggs on a plate and save them for later. Then cut another tablespoon of butter and put it in the pan for it to melt. With the onions we cut up earlier, put them in the pan with the melted butter. Then you are going to add your three tablespoons of garlic to the butter and the onions. 
Next, add your peas and carrots mix. We like to use the ones out of the bag that are frozen. Then you are going to add your pre-cooked and chilled rice, about four to six cups. Then add your last tablespoon of butter and make sure it's chopped up in the pan. Then add your white rice to the mixture in the pan. Now that you have added the white rice, you are going to add the soy sauce to the taste of your choice to your mixture. Now you are going to add the oyster sauce, and which adds flavor. After you have followed all these steps, you are going to mix the rice for 2-3 to three minutes without stopping. Then you want to turn your burner off to add the egg from earlier and to add the sesame oil. After you have mixed the egg and the sesame oil, your rice is all done. Now enjoy. My name is Olivia and today I am going to be showing you how to make super easy Alfredo with only two ingredients. All you need is your pasta of your choice, butter, and grated Parmesan cheese. Hi everyone, it's Amira and today I'll be showing you how to make Samoa apple slices. What you'll need are three Granny Smith apples, a bag of coconut flakes, semi-sweet chocolate chips, a jar of caramel, and three tablespoons of butter. You are going to need a cup of caramel and a cup of coconut flakes and add it into a bigger bowl and start to mix until the consistency is like this. Now you will need to add butter to half a cup of chocolate chips and heat it up for 30 seconds. After that, you will need to start cutting your apples into slices and find something circular to create a hole like this. After, you will need to line up your apples and start adding the coconut and caramel mix. Once you have added the mixture to every apple slice, you will start adding the chocolate drizzle on top. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. I'm Amira Hussein, WBHS.